you did have a near-death experience. Yes, I was dead for, I don't remember how long. You were driving to work and you had a heart attack. On the freeway. And you carried on driving while having a heart attack. For about 15 or 20 minutes. Which is very you. You got into the parking lot and you collapsed. I went into the infirmary, which was at the entrance to Warner Brothers. Okay, and you collapsed and then you were on the table and at one point they thought... When I collapsed, I had these five guys run toward me who worked in the infirmary and they tried to revive me. And I remember one of them was pumping my chest and the other was grabbing an oxygen mask. And I remember hearing the guy who was pumping my chest say to the others, I'm not getting anything. And when you, when you lose your senses, you lose, if you die slowly, you lose them one by one. Right. And the last sense you lose is the sense of hearing. And um, So did you think, I'm dying? Yes. I remember thinking, oh, my God, I'm, I'm dying. I was in my 40s, and I thought, my God, I'm dying, and I've done nothing with my life. <laughs> I've accomplished nothing. And I was moving as though on an escalator, not walking, okay. but like gliding. Yeah toward a distant white light. And I distinctly heard a woman's voice say to me, it's all right, it doesn't matter. Do you, do you, do you think that And that, then I blacked out. Okay, do you think that that voice, what do you think it was? It was certainly not of this earth. Okay, so you heard a, a, a disembodied, non-earthly voice saying to you... Woman. Woman's voice saying to you, it's all right, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Another person... And then I was out. Okay, well, another person would take that as a kind of, you know, poor line, there we are. You know, it's a... There is something else. Oh, sure. I thought there was something else at that time. So what do you think now? That there's something yes. else, but I don't know. Was this an illusion? Was this wishful thinking? I, I don't know. It's, I had never died before. <laughs> uh, but then I woke up some time later. Yeah, you were I, out for a while. Yeah, I don't know how long. And I was in an emergency room at St. Joseph Hospital in Burbank. And I was looking up to a very uh, close white light in the hospital. Yeah. And I, I couldn't breathe. I had an oxygen mask, which I kept tearing off because I couldn't breathe with it. And they kept putting it back on. And I thought I was in hell. <laughs> I'm looking at this blazing <laughs> white light and can't breathe. And I thought... This is my fate. You thought that all those people that said you're going to go to hell for making The Exorcist, it was true. <laughs> Something like that. But, but you know what? I don't have any ultimate conclusions, Mark. I mean, I just, I'm very open minded about the whole thing. And I don't frown on anyone's faith or belief. Uh, in fact, I, I want to be a believer. I can't accept the church the way it is. Uh, I was raised in the Jewish faith, mm -hmm. but the greatest minds who ever lived have only theories. Well, you, the thing you quoted to me, which you say in the documentary, is you said it's the, it's the Hamlet, it's there are more things in heaven and earth ratio than there are in your philosophy. And you said that's actually what your position on it is, that, that it, we, don't, we don't know, and that's the We're point. We're not meant to know. But then you, you read the work of rationalists like Christopher Hitchens, mm -hmm. actual atheists, who are very convincing in their writings. 
you, you know about the role of the devil's advocate? Mm-hmm. Whenever someone is a candidate for sainthood in the Catholic Church, they have people who come forward who bring testimony about miracles that yeah. this person has performed. And then there's the devil's advocate who speaks to the opposite. Yeah. In the case of Mother Teresa, Christopher Hitchens was the devil's advocate. <laughs> He actually came forward and slagged off Mother <laughs> Teresa <laughs> and tried to convince the examiners that she was not only not entitled to be considered for sainthood, but was an evil woman. 